Breaking news this morning, a third person has now come forward accusing Father Michael Flaker of abuse. Yeah, Joni's standing by live. She's got the tales. Good morning, Joni. Good morning. This third accuser is a man who no longer lives in Illinois. He says that Father Michael Flager gave him marijuana and liquor over a period of time and made a sexual, unwanted sexual advance on him when he was 18 and that this happened in the 1970s. This third accuser came forward with claims against Father Flager after seeing the first two men tell their story. He says the inappropriate behavior happened in the bedroom of the rectory at St. Sabina Church. He was not a minor at the time, and he says it was not consensual. He's now in his 50s, and his claims are in a sworn affidavit. He was in contact with the attorney for the first two men who came forward, brothers who say Flager molested them repeatedly. DCFS investigated and just announced the claims were unfounded, but that the ruling does not mean the incidents did not occur. St. Sabina parishioners have been speaking out in support of their pastor, and they're calling for his return. He was removed from the, archdiocese, from the uh, parish pending the investigation, and on social media he has posted that he is innocent and that when this is over, he will have more to say. The Archdiocese investigation is still open, but now there is this new information to consider. Reporting live outside the Archdiocese offices, I'm Joni Lum. Now back to you. All right, Joni, thank you. Well, as she just reported, this week, St. Sabina Church is withholding tens of thousands of dollars in assessments to the Chicago Archdiocese. And this, of course, is an effort to put pressure on the church to wrap up the investigation into Father Michael Flager in that abuse case that, again, dates back decades ago. We want to bring in right now the attorney for this latest accuser. Yeah, Eugene Hollander, kind enough to get up early with us. Good morning to you. Good Let's morning. get right. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Let's get right into this. Uh, this uh, accuser, a 59 year old man, as Joni just mentioned, claims that Father Flager grabbed him in a sexual manner when he was 18. Now he says, I don't think Joni mentioned this, he's not looking for any uh, financial settlement. So why did he wait more than 40 years to come forward? You know, it's very difficult for victims of sexual abuse to come forward, and he wanted to do the right thing. He heard about the brother's claims, he knows the older brother, and he wanted to provide more context and corroboration to his claim. Well, and Joni also reported this as well, DCFS conducting its own investigation in this, and that agency for the state is saying it found no evidence to back the claims that have been made by the two brothers that are alleging Father Michael Flager had abused them decades ago. Um, what, what is your response to that agency that says they didn't find anything decades later? Sure. Well, the DCFS findings mean absolutely nothing because DCFS only has jurisdiction to investigate childhood sexual abuse claims. These are sexual abuse claims made by my clients who are now adults. Further, my, because of that reason, my clients did not give statements to DCFS. So they really had absolutely no information to go on. We now have two statements by the brothers, and we also have uh, this third victim who's going forward in a sworn affidavit corroborating the brothers' claims. We also have statements um, from Father Flager's defense team that this is nothing more than a shakedown, and they cite the letter that Father Flager personally received from the younger brother demanding $20,000. He got that letter just before the complaint was filed with the archdiocese. Uh, your response to that? Well, first of all, it wasn't a shakedown at all. What the younger brother was seeking was an admission from Father Flager that he did this. If Father Flager would have sent you know, $20 and clearly it would have shown that he was guilty. Further, the older brother never made a claim for money, and this third victim is not seeking any money whatsoever. Mm. So the fact that it's a shakedown is preposterous. You know, there are other troubling details in this case. Um, in the third accuser's account, including that he and Father F Flager had drank together, they smoked pot together. He was a teen, um, over 18. But, you know, your job as the attorney here in this case is you have to convince people in a courtroom possibly, and people who love this man for all of the good things that he's done here in Chicago, and you have to convince them that he is not the person that they think he is. So how, how hard will that be for you? Well, you know, the thing is here, you know, what Father Flager is saying, what the parishioner is saying, they should be encouraging people to come forward. Every sexual abuse victim deserves to be heard. And, you know, what uh, Governor Cuomo is doing in New York, they should let the investigation unfold. That's what the parishioners 
should be saying. We want to hear the evidence. We want to let the Archdiocese of Chicago do its job. We want to let them hear what the younger brother's saying, what the older brother's saying, what now the third victim is saying. We want to hear that all together and then make a decision. Well, Not same, discourage people from coming forward. St. Sabina parishioners, you know, reporting that they are going to withhold the assessments from the Archdiocese um, until, you know, as a way of putting pressure on the archdiocese to wrap up this investigation what do you think about that move do you think that is an effective move for them or how do you think that's going to play out well you know i think that's ridiculous again what the what father flager and the pressure should be saying is let's hear what these witnesses have to say let the archdiocese do its job don't discourage people from coming forward um, everybody deserves a voice. We want to hear those voices. Okay, so if that uh, investigation by the church comes back and they also find no wrongdoing and he has returned to his duties, what's the next step with regard to your clients? You know, we can evaluate at that time and if necessary, file a lawsuit. But, you know, we're doing what we can to present these claims and go forward and see if the claims can be resolved. And, and, and one final question, um, and this is a difficult question. How do you put a dollar attachment to something as serious as uh, sexual abuse? Um, that, that has to be very difficult for you. Well, I guess the question is, who can put a dollar value on a victim who's been sexually assaulted multiple times by a trusted member of the clergy? So that's something we're going to be taking a hard look at. But, uh, you know, once this happens, you can't put someone back together. I want to ask you about your, your clients, maybe all three of them, but especially the two brothers um, who say that this went on for some time. Uh, how are they doing, and what are you doing to help them achieve recovery, you know, over, over what they say happened? Sure. You know, my clients are grappling with this. It's a very difficult thing to come forward, I think, especially in the African-American community. And it doesn't help when Father Flager or the parishioners uh, start insulting them and discouraging victims to come forward. So. They want the truth out. That's what we want Father Flager to do. We want Father Flager to admit what he did you know, some 40, 45 years ago. You know, based upon my two clients' accounts, third victim's account, um, there are likely others that are out there. We should hear all of their voices. Well, it's important to note again that Father Flager denies any wrongdoing, but Eugene Hollander, we certainly thank, thank you, you uh, this morning. Thank you. Appreciate that update with that third alleged victim. By the way, this is for our viewers at home. We have reached out to St. Sabina and the Archdiocese for a response. We will keep you updated throughout the morning.